Thank you all for joining us to this session. My name is Uri Lebaev. I'm sure some of you are familiar with me and my community, MDLI. I'm very honored to be the moderator of this Gen AI uh, track. Unfortunately, um, Ophir Bibi from Lightrix was not able to be here today, so we will start from our second lecture, and I'll be happy to invite uh, Ophir Lavi from Dataspan to speak about if can AI train AI. Thank you. Okay, so obtaining data for uh, um, training computer vision models is a super easy task. Said no one ever. Uh, if you ever try to train a computer vision model, you know that uh, you need to, to collect a lot of data and you need to collect a lot of data. It takes a lot of time, a lot of resources. And uh, on top of being time consuming, there are the additional challenges that has to, be, uh, has to do with labeling and uh, um, annotating the data. And even if you have a model that was trained um, and is deployed out there, sometime, sometimes it's very, very hard to collect enough data along the time. It might, might take a lot of time to uh, collect edge cases and collect data uh, at all the conditions that uh, you are looking for in the real world. And we call this problem the death valley of unattainable uh, data. The model performance is held back by data you cannot uh, collect. So the question is whether Gen AI can help here. And exactly this, this question was asked by a group of researchers from Google Brain uh, about a year ago. And what they did is they took a they took uh, uh, a diffusion model, and they fine-tuned it just as many uh, tasks in computer vision. They said, okay, let's start with ImageNet. And they fine-tuned the uh, model on each class of uh, ImageNet. And eventually, they trained the uh, model based on the original ImageNet data set together with data that, they, uh, you, that, that, that was generated by the diffusion model. And you can see that actually it worked. You see that an improvement uh, in the accuracy. Um, although there is an improvement in accuracy, you can see here that there is a degradation in the performance if you add more uh, generated data. And the sweet spot there was uh, adding one image of uh, generated data to the, uh, uh, on each one image uh, at ImageNet. A couple of uh, months later, fast forward. Okay, the batteries are not working. So fast forward um, a couple of uh, months, a group of researchers from AWS, together with um, uh, researchers from Max Planck Institute, questioned this uh, paradigm. They said, well, computer vision models, and specifically diffusion models, are trained on a whole lot of data. So why do we need to go through the proxies, through the diffusion model, in order to extract the information that is out there in the data? Why can't we just use the data that was uh, used to train the diffusion model, and that's exactly uh, what they did. So they took 10% of the original ImageNet data, and for each class, they retrieved the nearest uh, samples from the original data that was used to train the diffusion model, and they compared it, and, and of course, they added the uh, retrieved uh, data to the training set. No Gen AI here, right? And of course, they compared it to output that came from a diffusion model that was conditioned on the class. So again, although diffusion models did make a good job in improving the accuracy uh, at this setting as well, you can see that using the retrieved data, again, no Gen AI here, was even better. But it seems like that um, in cases that are other than detecting cat cats and dogs, it's kind of difficult to uh, really use uh, a, a, uh, the plain methods of just generating uh, the data using diffusion model in order to improve them. And that's why we uh, created our low data computer vision rapid development platform, where uh, I'm going to walk you through um, a uh, real case studies, uh, two, two real case studies 
uh, of a client. So the client is a large train operator in the US. In the US alone, we have 10,000 derailments of trains from the track a year. They cost a lot in money and unfortunately in lives too. And although the client had a system running for more than six years, they managed to collect only 60 images of wheels with damages. Wheels are the number one uh, um, uh, reason for train derailments. And with 60 images, you cannot train any model uh, today. So let's put JetAI to work. This is a clear wheel from the cameras. As I said, they already have a deploy model. Let's see what diffusion models are uh, doing with a, a simple prop. So this is the prop that you can see here. And clearly, you can see that the image that was created is first out of distribution. Second, it's kind of hard really to find the crack uh, here. Um, and you know, it's not, it's, it might be photorealistic, but it doesn't really look like uh, the real data that the customer, that the client uh, has. So let's try another approach, again, using diffusion models. Why don't we do in-painting, take the original data, in-paint a uh, uh, place where we want to add the missing information, and then uh, use the prompt. So here is the result from this approach. You can see the, the wheel. Of course, it looks like the original wheel. But the crack that you see here, if we ask Roy, Roy is the train company uh, expert, that looks nothing like a genuine crack that can cause a derailment. And the model that was built on data that was generated this way did not improve uh, uh, the model. So what do we want from uh, a system that would allow us to generate not only images, nice photos for you and, and for me, but uh, actually to train, to, to uh, generate data sets for training, uh, uh, for training uh, computer vision models. So we want to keep the original distribution as you saw. So. You want to add, we want to add the missing aspects, the cracks or whatever damages that we want to add uh, in my example. We want those aspects to be as genuine as possible. And on top of all, we want the whole data set. We don't want just a single image and we want the whole data set to improve the downstream model. And the full process needs to be optimized for this rather than for generating uh, beautiful images. This is the heart of the process. What you see here at the center is a feedback loop, uh, pretty similar in or uh, conceptually similar to uh, uh, reinforcement uh, through human feedback, uh, like the uh, technology that transformed GPT to chat GPT. And th throughout this feedback, uh, after generating the original, the, the original generated data, the human can provide feedback. The feedback can be both uh, textual and quantitative in order to improve the, uh, the uh, model itself. The user answers two questions, the where questions and, and the what questions. Where exactly do, do we want to add the concept that is missing? And what exactly should be generated there? So one can use a variety of unsupervised, supervised, prompt-based, few shots learning, uh, methods in order to uh, answer this question, and that's what the platform helped the user to do. You might ask yourself, of course, if the data is indeed uh, similar to the original data. So you can see here a projection. Um, the colors correspond to different clusters, mainly different types of damages in this case. In uh, circles, you can see the original data, and, in, uh, uh, the, and the generated data is denoted by plus signs. You can see that the plus signs, uh, the generated data, fits quite well uh, within the uh, area of the real data. You can also see the red area up here, where no generated data uh, is uh, available, and that really gives the user a hint on where should we go next. Okay, so now I'm going to examine what types of damages are there in this red cluster, and do the same process, the same uh, generation and feedback process in order to uh, add more data for this, uh, 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 for this uh, uh, cluster. We can reach uh, the level of uh, generation that, uh, uh, that we reach by uh, doing this iterative uh, uh, loop. So the user can provide feedback, as I said before, both textual and uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, and we get the, log, the logs in order to um, generate uh, or, or improve, refine the process of uh, generating the new batch. So again, this is the clear wheel, the one that you saw before. This is a crack that was generated by uh, our system. 
And we are using the same method for other use cases. You can see here the improvement that we got from original data on a defect detection setting uh, with another client, reducing the error rate from, one point, uh, from around 14% to uh, 1.5. And you can also see here that the uh, iter iterative process uh, uh, of the feedback actually helps to uh, improve uh, the model. So last, I want to thank the research group um, at Datastan, including Roy and Almog and um, Elad, and also our collaborator, collaborators from uh, uh, Acridata, Sanjay, and uh, the team. Thank you.